Daniel. Man, that guy's got some skills. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. So we've all heard the phrase that you can never have too many clamps. Now, I don't think I have too many clamps, but I do have way too many clamps laying in random spots in my shop. And that's what we're going to address today. I've got five unique clamp racks that we're gonna build that I think might benefit you in your shop. So I'm still suffering from my shop renovation. And one of the things that's been driving me crazy are my clamps. I've had these things hanging off of every single shelf in my shop. And these are all the clamps that I have that need a home. I've got parallel clamps, quick clamps, F-style clamps, screw clamps, bandy clamps, spring clamps, and even a ton of larger clamps like pipe clamps resting in the corner of my shop. So I need to get all these clamps organized so that I can grab them when I need them. And if you remember, a few weeks ago, I built this French cleat wall. So I'd like to make all these racks compatible with the French cleat system. So let's not waste any more time and build our first clamp rack. So the first clamp rack that I'm going to build today are for my parallel clamps. Now this is a rack that I found on Pinterest. And if we look at this design, you can see how nice this looks. You can see the person incorporated the French cleat system and they even spiffed it up with some Bessie logos. And this is exactly what we're going to try to recreate minus those Bessie logos. So for the parallel clamps, I'm gonna create two racks and I want each rack to be able to accommodate six clamps. So I'm just gonna measure the depth of six clamps and I'm right at 12 and a quarter. And here I've got a piece of plywood that's four feet long and about 16 inches wide, which will be perfect in case I wanna add a couple of clamps down the road. So right off the bat, the first thing that I want to do is to cut some strips at 12 inches long. So I'll set my fence to 12 inches. With my fence set, I'll slice and dice as many 12 inch strips as I can get. With all of my strips cut to width, I'm simply going to grab a round object and make a template so that I can cut off the edges of each one of these strips. Then it's over to the bandsaw to roughly cut out the curved corners on one of the pieces so that we can use it as a template. Once we have those corners roughly cut out, we'll go over to the belt sander and smooth out those rough edges. Then it's just a matter of using the refined piece to mark out the corners on the other boards. Once we have those markings made, we can go back to the bandsaw and cut off those corners. With all of our boards roughly cut to shape, I'm now going to use my refined piece and attach it to each one of the rough cut boards with some double-sided tape. Then we can go over to the router table and put a flush trim bit to smooth out each one of those rough cut pieces. With two of our pieces cut to shape, I'm now placing a clamp in between the two pieces to figure out the width that I need in between each board. In this case, it's an inch and a half. So back at the table saw, I'll set my fence to an inch and a half so that we can rip some strips to place in between each one of these support beams. With a few of those strips cut out, I can place them in between the two boards to figure out how much overhang I want for the French cleat system. For these clamps, I'm going to want about a three inch overhang on each side. And since the width of our clamp rack is three inches exactly, that means we need to cut some nine inch strips. So I'll set the fence to 9 inches and cut a couple of French cleat backers at 9 inches wide. With the boards cut to exactly 9 inches, I'm now striking a line at 4.5 inches, which is the direct center of each one of those backers. Then I can place one of those inch and a half strips and line it up with that 4.5 inch marking. Then it's just a matter of adding a little bit of wood glue, squaring it up, and then putting some 18 gauge nails through the center of that inch and a half strip. And I'll repeat this process for both clamp racks. So one of the best things that I did when I made this French cleat wall is I made some extra cleats. That way I can just cut off what I need and add it to our clamp rack. So I'll take one of my French cleat scraps and mark off exactly what I need. Then it's just a matter of cutting them down to size over at the miter saw. Once those cleats are cut to size, I'll add a little bit of wood glue and then I'll nail them to the back of the frame. To add just a little bit more strength, I'm going to pre-drill and countersink three screws into the back of each cleat. Then I can send the screws home, making sure that none of the screw heads protrude off the back of those cleats. 
With the cleat attached and the one and a half spacer attached, I can now add my two support beams with just a little bit of wood glue and some clamps. To make sure both of those support beams don't bow inward during the glue up, I'm going to place an inch and a half strip at the very end to give it support as the glue cures. And I'll repeat this exact same process with the second clamp rack. Once everything's clamped up, I'll let these set for a couple of hours. Once that glue's cured, I'll take them out of clamps and give them a test fit on the old French cleat wall. Since this clamp rack will be holding a lot of weight, it's really important that the base of this clamp rack will be supported by two cleats. It's that second cleat that's really going to give this design the support it needs. Once those racks are in place, we can load them up with our parallel clamps. And here you can see with that extra length, I have the ability to add two more clamps to each clamp rack. Well that worked pretty well, and I really like the fact that I can add a couple of clamps to each rack down the road. But one thing by hanging both of these racks so high is that I eliminate the usage of the cleats below. So I'm going to move both of these racks to a little bit lower cleat. Now this type of clamp rack isn't limited to those heavy parallel clamps. You can also make these for your quick clamps. If we take a look at these two clamp racks, you can see they have the exact same design. The only difference is they're a little bit narrower on the rack. And here you can see the difference between the width of the two clamp racks. And since the quick clamps aren't as heavy, they only require a smaller support structure in the back. But even though these clamp racks won't be holding as much weight, you'll still notice that I have the support of at least two cleats on each clamp rack. So these seven racks gave a home to probably 70% of my clamps, but I do have a lot more clamps that need a home. So let's get started with that. So my next clamp rack that I want to create is for my F clamps, and I've got about 12 of these. So the first thing that I want to do is to measure the bar and the jaw of the clamp. In this case, we have 3 eighths of an inch for the bar and 3 quarters of an inch for the jaw. Another thing I want to consider is how far away do I want each clamp to sit. In this case, I'm looking at about 2 inches apart. So if I want each clamp rack to hold 12 clamps with a 2 inch overhang on either side, I need to cut a strip down at 26 inches. We also need to figure out how deep our notches need to be to give support to that clamp. In this case, it's about 3.5 inches. So I'll set my fence to 3.5 inches and I'll rip 4 strips since I'm making 2 of these. Now that I have four of those strips cut, I'm now going to take two of the strips and measure out one inch from the very edge. Then I'll strike a line at every two inch to give me an intersection at that one inch marking. Using those markings, I'll take a half inch Forstner bit and I'll drill a hole out at each one of those intersections. These holes will give me the end points for each one of the slots where my clamps will set. With all those holes drilled out, I'm now going to take a straight edge and strike a line at the intersection of each one of the holes to the edge of the board. And it's a good idea to use a square here to make sure all your lines are completely perpendicular. Once we have our lines drawn out, we'll go back to the bandsaw and cut out that waste material. And here you can see how the pieces with the notches cut out will come together with the other strips. Next, I'll just pre-drill and countersink the pieces with the notches cut out so that we can attach them to the other strips. After that, I'll add a little bit of wood glue and clamp them all together. Then we can send some screws home to make sure that these two pieces don't come apart. With everything glued and screwed together, I can now go back to some of my French cleat scraps and measure out how much of each scrap I need. Then it's just a matter of cutting them down to size over at the miter saw. Then I'll strike a line at an inch from the top of each one of those cleats. With that one inch marking, I'll strike a line at every four inches to give me a little bit of guidance where I can send some screws in. So in the same fashion, I'll pre-drill and countersink at each one of those intersections. Then I'll add just a little bit of wood glue and clamp it all together. Lastly, I'll send some screws in to make sure that this cleat is securely attached. Once those screws are in, this thing's ready to be hung. The only thing left to do is to fill this bad boy with clamps. Well, I couldn't be more pleased with our second clamp rack, and I even have room to grow with the second one. 
Now one thing to consider, if you do have some heavier clamps, you could make the extension on the back of this clamp rack a little bit longer to give it a little bit more support. And that takes us to our two most difficult clamp racks that we're going to make today. Now let's move on to our third clamp rack, which will help us store all our pipe clamps. So the nice thing about pipe clamps is they kind of have a built-in hanger with the feet of them. And here I'm just measuring the distance between the foot and the barrel of the clamp, which is about an inch and a half. This inch and a half is the thickest piece of wood that we can fit in between that barrel and the foot. Next, I want to measure the height of the foot. In this case, it's about a half an inch. So I want to make sure that my notch is at least a half an inch and probably closer to three quarters of an inch. To make the hook that these clamps will hang on, I want to make sure that I'm using a hardwood. In this case, I'm going to be using a piece of three quarter inch poplar. And here you can see I have that poplar on top of a piece of three quarter inch plywood and it's overhanging about a half of an inch. It's this half inch overhang that those clamps will actually hang on. And if we go back to the clamp, it's the foot that will slide into that notch. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to set my fence to five inches and then we'll rip that poplar down to five inches exactly. Once we have that poplar ripped down, I'm now gonna set my fence to four and a quarter. We're gonna rip that plywood down to four and a quarter, giving it a three quarter inch overhang, which is a little bit larger than the half inch that we initially started with. And here you can see the end result once those two pieces are ripped down to size. Since my poplar is a little bit long, I'm gonna take my plywood and just make a marking so that I can cut it down over at the miter saw. With both pieces cut to size, you can see how they'll fit together once they're laminated. Next up, on the poplar, I'm going to strike a line at 2 inches and then adjust my Pelini pocket rule to 1 inch and strike a line at the other side. With both of those hash marks made, I'm now going to take a T-ruler and carry that line across the entire piece of poplar. Then I'll put a small tick mark at every 2 inches along both of those lines. Then it's just a matter of pre-drilling and countersinking a hole in each one of those tick marks. And as usual, I'm probably way over building this, but those clamps are really heavy, so I want to make sure that these two pieces of wood will not come apart. After that, I'll just add a little bit of wood glue and laminate the two pieces together. Once I have the wood glue on the two pieces of wood, I'll throw some clamps on them and drive in some screws at every single one of those pre-drilled marks. Now that I'm completely confident that these two pieces of wood aren't going to separate, this is the time when I'll add a French cleat if I was adding it to my French cleat system. But since my pipe clamps are so long, I'm actually going to mount this to my wall. So to mount this contraption to my wall, I'm actually going to strike a line at 2 inches exactly. Then in the same fashion as we did before, I'm going to take my T-ruler and carry that line across the entire piece of poplar. Once that line is drawn, I can pre-drill and countersink a hole at every 2 inches going down the entire piece of poplar. Then it's just a matter of taking it to my wall and sinking a screw right in the center of this mount. And then I can take my level to make sure that it's completely level before I add any more screws. And with all these screws in place, this thing isn't going to go anywhere. Lastly, I can add all my pipe clamps and even have room to add a couple more down the road. Once again, a simple, easy clamp racks to be able to get all of your pipe clamps out of the way. Now let's take a look at our fourth clamp rack. So our fourth clamp rack is for our spring clamps and our bandy clamps. And for this clamp rack, we're going to be using a one inch dowel. It's this dowel that will easily allow us to clamp our spring clamps as well as our bandy clamps right around that dowel. So the first thing that I wanna do is to make a marking at 13 inches on the dowel. This will make sure that we can place the dowel inside a piece of wood and still have at least 12 inches of length. Then it's just a matter of going over to the miter saw and cutting the dowel down to size. For the base of this clamp rack, I'm going to take a piece of the scrap plywood. In this case, it's about 5 inches thick. So I'm going to cut this down to 5 inches wide by 5 inches thick. So with the stop block in place, I'll cut this 5 inch strip down to 5 inches wide. Next, I'll take a straight edge and strike a line across the diagonals to find the exact center of the 5 by 5 piece of wood. Then it's just a matter of going to the drill press and putting a 1 inch Forstner bit and drilling out a hole in the center of the wood. With those 1 inch holes drilled out, I'll now place some glue in those holes and slide the dowels into place. Then I'll just take a mallet and tap them into place to make sure they're fully seated. And with that, we're almost done. We'll simply grab a piece of that scrap French cleat and strike a line to make sure that we cut it down to size. 
Then we can simply cut the cleat down to size over at the miter saw. Then I'll take my pocket rule and make a marking from the top and the side of each one of the cleats so that we can drive in a screw into the base of the clamp rack. Then it's just a matter of drilling and countersinking where those intersections are so that we can drive in those screws. Before we drive in those screws, we'll just add a little bit of wood glue and clamp them on to the base of those clamp racks. Then we'll attach those cleats with two screws in each rack. With both of those clamp racks complete, we can add them to our French cleat wall and add our clamps. Well, we're really making progress here today. I've got all my spring clamps and my bandy clamps hung up, so now we just need to take care of one more clamp. And this is the final clamp that needs a home, my wood screw clamp. And this is gonna be all about using this interior space right in between the clamp. So the first thing that we wanna do is to measure the interior void in between the two screws. And in this case, it's about three and a half inches. So we'll set our table saw fence to three and a half inches and rip some strips. The next thing I wanna do is to figure out how long I want these strips to be. And the clamp is about two inches thick. And my piece is about 11 inches long, so I'll be able to fit about five clamps on this rack. So next I'll laminate the two pieces of wood together by adding a little bit of wood glue and throwing in some 18 gauge nails. And here you can see how that laminated piece of wood will fit right in the center of that clamp. Don't get any ideas. For the base of the clamp rack, I want two inches on either side of the laminated strips. So I'll have two inches and then one and a half inch in the center, giving me five and a half inches. So I'll set the fence on my table saw to five and a half inches and I'll rip a strip. With that strip ripped down to five and a half inches, I now want to measure from the top of the strip five inches down, and this will be the height of the clamp rack base. So we'll go over to the miter saw and cut it down to five inches. Once our base is cut to size, I'll take my pocket rule and measure over two inches, making sure that the laminated strip is right in the center of that block. Then I'll trace around the base of the rack so that I know where it lands on the frame. This will give me a visual representation for where I can pre-drill and countersink the holes for my screws. Once I have everything lined up, I'll add a little bit of wood glue to the base of the rack and then I can center it on the frame. Then I'll add a clamp to secure it into place and then I can send in some screws. Our final task is to take some of that French cleat scrap and measure it down to size so that we can attach it to the back of this clamp rack. Once we're measured, we can cut it down to size over at the miter saw. Using the same technique we used before, we'll measure down one inch from the top and the side of the French cleat so that we can pre-drill and countersink our holes. With our holes drilled out, we can add a little bit of wood glue, clamp it on to the base of our clamp rack and send in some screws. And just like that, our final clamp rack is ready to be installed and used. Well, that officially makes five clamp racks that we built today, and I'm really pleased with each rack that we built. From the simple pipe clamp rack to the more complex parallel clamp and quick clamp racks, each one of these is going to get my shop just a little bit more organized. Well, thanks for joining me today on these clamp rack builds. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really helps out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.